Yo, what up? This is your boy Bronx Reefer Brock, and I'm back, and I'm here to show you guys how to plumb a UV sterilizer. So, went to Home Depot, got all the necessary little uh, doodads and PVC parts that are necessary to plumb this, what's called the PU36. Um, I was a little apprehensive considering it's called the PU. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But uh, a lot of people have this UV sterilizer and it, it works pretty well for a few people. Uh, you can upgrade, you cannot have it. Personally, I've had UV sterilizers before. I haven't seen much difference, but I considered trying this one just to see what's what. And I had a little bit of space left. So what I'm going to do that I'm going to show you guys what I did with the plumbing. Uh, as you can see here, I have a little bit of space here on the right side of the sump. And I intend to put the UV sterilizer there and have it run through my manifold, uh, recirculate, and then come back out. Now the trick is, when you're recirculating from a UV sterilizer, if you have like Chato and uh, stuff here in your refugium like I do, uh, you can actually kill off your livestock here your copepods and things like that so you have to be careful with the uv sterilizer and um, just basically keep an eye on everything so first step is get yourself some pvc tape wrap it around these outlets it's very important that you plumb this properly because a lot of people plumb it upside down i was one of those people so you see folks this is the wrong way to do things this is upside down the cord as you can see is coming from the top has to be facing the bottom uh, I also didn't really want to screw into my cabinet so I kind of just have it uh, sitting there with a little uh, velcro tape but it is upside down don't do this please PVC primer which is purple you can get the clear one which I definitely suggest but I'm not in a you know in a mood to fart around with this stuff I'm not trying to make it pretty uh, you need your PVC glue as well just make sure you're you're working in a highly you know ventilated area open the windows get some fans going you don't want to breathe this stuff in for too long so you got to make sure that you put the primer on each part each connection part of your PVC uh, I didn't go through a part of list. Uh, I'm sorry, a list of parts here for you guys. Uh, basically, because you can look at them and kind of see what they are. I don't really remember anyway. Um, <laughs> but they're just connections, elbows, uh, all for one inch plumbing. A few. What do they call those? Oh, I'm not sure what they call those things anymore. Uh, but you definitely want to put your primer on first before you put your glue on. That makes it a a much easier stick. A set for the glue to stick to and you want to make sure that you don't miss any parts missing pieces or missing primer on parts is a big big problem because once you have this all together you're gonna to realize you didn't put your primer and your glue on maybe just one section of the PVC and it's a wrap for you you're gonna have leaks water is gonna be everywhere and then you're gonna to have to take the entire plumbing section apart and redo it just because you forgot to put the PVC on, put the uh, PVC cement on. So once you do have it on, you want to make sure that you press down on it because it pushes back out. The parts uh, that you're putting together, they will push back out. So you have to make sure you put some weight on it and make sure that it's in there tight and snug and give it a few minutes to set. You really don't need a few minutes. This kind of sets fairly quickly. But I do give it a couple of minutes to set properly so I can increase my chances of not having that leak. All right, so you're basically going to measure everything out. You're going to go back and forth to Home Depot a couple of times. It, it's, it's inevitable. Um, even though you plan everything out, you write everything down, you write all the pieces that you might need, the elbows, the, the turns and twists that you're going to need, you're still going to wind up going back to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you get your parts from.
Now, even though I'm putting the um, UV sterilizer here in this tight spot, uh, it's one of those things where I'm just kind of trying it here. I don't really want it there. I have other plans for that space. So I'm putting it there temporarily. I'm kind of just showing you guys this video just to show you how to put you know, PVC together for anything. It, it goes not just for the uh, UV sterilizers, for any type of you know, reactor or any other piece or part that you want to add to your system. It's very easy once you have the PVC cutters and you have a bunch of PVC. You can get colored PVC, you can make it look pretty, you can get all kind of ball valves and you know whatever valves you need you know, to add to your system. Uh, it's a very easy process. It's just like you know an erector set. Just putting pieces together, measuring things out. Um, you I measured this out from the UV sterilizer back to the manifold only because I was using a small piece of um, flex tubing. Okay, yeah, so, and here we are. We are still upside down, uh, but you just really want to focus on getting everything stabilized. Again, upside down. We're going to fix that in a minute. Uh, but it, it's important that your measurements are right so you can reach out to the proper connections. Uh, here I was measuring the length of the PVC. I was really restricting my space. It was really awful. Keep in mind, when you're doing a lot of these bends and twists and turns and these elbows, you're going to be restricting your flow, which is a good But that's a good thing when it comes to UV sterilizers because you want that slow flow so the bacteria has contact time with the UV light and UV light can maximize its effectiveness. But my overall concern here at this point is not the measurements, uh, not the connections. My main concern was leaks. Uh, I was just checking for leaks everywhere I could check. Uh, my second concern was the fact that I pretty much covered up my return area here and I couldn't really get my hand in there to do any maintenance if I needed to, which I usually do need to. I also have my apex probes that are in there and a few things that I have to reach in in case of emergency. So when you're doing this, check every single corner, connection, knob, check everywhere you can for leaks. Uh, even before you send any water through to test it, just check that you've glued everything properly. Uh, that's why I also like to use a purple primer because it reminds me that I actually did that section and it should be sealed properly. The overall point of this is to have fun. Enjoy yourself with it. Don't overthink it. Uh, just make it functional. You know, make sure everything works properly and you have the ease and the, the ability to take it apart quickly and easily if you need to. Uh, with this hobby, you're going to learn a lot, you know, so play with it. It's, it's, you're going to learn plumbing. You're going to learn carpentry. You're going to learn chemistry, uh, lighting. You know, you're going to learn all of these things. And it's going to take time, and you're going to enjoy the knowledge you've gained from trying new things and putting, you know, this all together and having a, a thriving fish tank or reef tank, whatever type of tank you choose to have. You know, don't get discouraged if it, you know, it doesn't look great, or it's not straight, it's not perfect. Um, as long as it's working and you're, you're, you've achieved your goal uh, and you're making the tank work and everything is flowing properly and there's no leaks, as long as it's safe, it's a good job. Okay, so everything is installed. Let's take a quick tour of the flow. And so, first stage is from the return pump. The water goes up. It goes past this ball valve. The right side goes up to the top right side of the tank. The left side goes to this manifold. And one of the valves on the manifold goes right down into the refugium, while the rest of the left side goes up to the left side of the tank. This middle uh, valve is going to be saved for later. Uh, I'm probably going to be running a Kalkwasser reactor soon. Uh, I might use that for that. But for right now, I'm using it just for an escape valve if I need to do a quick water change or something like that. So the water will come out of the other ball valve 
goes into this pipe into the bottom of the UV sterilizer and up and out and around and back down into the return chamber. It's a very simple setup. It looks a little goofy. I guess I could have run all the piping towards the back. Um, but again, I didn't give it that much thought, honestly. I just wanted to get it hooked up. I just grabbed a couple of spare parts and PVC that I had laying around the house and put this all together. Um, when you're doing a lot of plumbing, you're going to have extra parts anyway. Like I said, all the trips you take to, to Home Depot, some stuff I keep, some stuff I return. But I have, a, you know, dozens of uh, elbows and, you know, unions and different things like that. So uh, you just use what you have. And it, they don't cost that much. These parts are like maybe $2 a part or a dollar a part. Uh, nothing major. And you can get a whole bunch of PVC, the actual piping itself for a very nice price. Uh, if you want colored PVC, that's not as expensive as you would think either. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys a quick install. Um, I'm gonna have more updates. I'm back on the scene. I'm gonna give you some more tank updates shortly. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little install here. Like I said, it's a little funky, but it works. And whatever you decide to do, it's gonna work as well. Just be confident. Try some new things and get it done. It's your boy Bronx Reefer Brock. I'm signing out. Stay tuned for the next joint. All right. Peace.